in this class we will continue about the next topic of our chapter that is the adaptations for self pollination we've already learned from from our previous class uh, the what is the process, what is a pollination what are the types of pollination so now we will see for the adaptation for self pollination so a self pollination self pollinated flowers they should have a characters which fit which can adapt which or which can fit for self pollination so here we will see what are those adaptation what are those characters that are that will fit for self pollination so a flower a self pollinated flower first of all it should be a bi it should be a bisexual flower bisexual flower because if it is not a bisexual flower obviously it will have uh, it it needs an agent or a pollinators for pollination for pollination so that's why it is a bisexual flower in which both the male and female sex organ are present in one flower so the adaptation the first adaptation that we are going to see here is homogamy the term is homogamy homogamy means in a bisexual flower the male gamete and the female gamete they mature at the same time so the male gamete male sex organ and female sex organ they mature at the same time they mature at the same time so this this is one adaptations for a self pollination pollinated flower so the next adaptation is place to gammy here here clistinogamy is means the male sex organ the male sex organ and the female sex organ are enclosed inside a flower clistinogamy means enclosed means close flower example of clistinogamy is oxalis viola extra so the the third adaptation is geo carpi in some plants in some flowers they there are some self pollinated flowers example arachis hypogea arachis hypogea which is the groundnut as you've known that the groundnut fruit is uh, the groundnut fruit grows inside under the soil region so this made us think that how can um because obviously the flower is a shoot system so it grows uh, the flowers is a shoot system it grows above the soil in a, above the soil but here how come the the fruit is inside the soil so here we'll see how it is so suppose this is a female flower this is a gynosium this is a gynosium this is the 
ovary and this is the thalamus the region which touch the ovary wall to the thalamus is known as a pedicel so when when this uh, ovary they they have gone pollination and and fertilization and all those things so the the pedicels it elongates this is thalamus this pedicels elongates this pedicels elongate elongate and it bends to the ground and it bends to the ground and this ovule these ovules it transform into a fruit so we've already known that um fruit is a ripened ovary so that is why here it is a fruit by the elongation of this pedicel by the elongation of this pedicel it goes into the ground so in some flowers in some flowers um there are some characters uh which fit for self pollination um suppose here in in mirabilis the anther bend to the stigma anthers bend to the stigma this is the anther suppose it is a bilobe anther it bends it bends to the stigma so of course it has to go a self pollination and then next in solanum tuberosa they has a long style and a long stick stigma so it has a long style and stigma stigma so here what happened here is that this long style they there is a coiling of of the style around the stigma these are some characters of a self pollinated flowers so there is there are many advantages of a self pollination but there are one uh, facts or maybe the best advantages is that a self pollination flower they produce they produce pure line of plants pure line of plants that means there are no mixings of genes no mixings of traits no variation and the the pure species continues and it continues with the pure species after pollination this has been the best the best fact of uh, self pollination so in our next class we will continue with the with the adaptation for cross pollination